house needs a bit of work and they plan on moving in with their three young children after the renovations are done. They're excited and they can't wait to start this chapter in their lives. But things quickly take a dark turn. A few days before the move, the husband finds a strange letter in the mail. The letter says 657 Boulevard has been the subject of my family for decades now and as it approaches its 110th birthday I have been put in charge of watching and waiting for its second coming. My grandfather watched the house in the 1920s and my father watched in the 1960s. It is now my time. Do you know the history of the house? Do you know what lies within the walls of 657 Boulevard? Why are you here? I will find out. The envelope had no return address. Who am I? The person wrote. There are hundreds and hundreds of cars that drive by 657 Boulevard each day. Maybe I am in one. Look at all the windows you can see from 657 Boulevard. Maybe I am in one. Look out at any of the windows in 657 Boulevard at all the people who stroll by each day. Maybe I am one. The letter finished with a suggestion that this message would not be the last. Welcome, my friends, welcome. Let the party begin. Followed and signed by the Watcher. And this is only the beginning of an incredibly creepy story. The Watcher boasted of having learned a lot about the family in the preceding weeks, especially about their children. The letter identified the couple's three kids by birth order and by their nicknames. The watcher sent another letter. 657 Boulevard is anxious for you to move in. It has been years and years since the young blood ruled the hallways of the house. Have you found all the secrets it holds yet? Will the young blood play? basement or are they too afraid to go down there alone i would be very afraid if i were them it is far away from the rest of the house if you were upstairs you would never hear them scream will they sleep in the attic or will you all sleep on the second floor who has the bedrooms facing the street i'll know as soon as you move in it will help me to know who is in which bedroom. Then I can plan better. All of the windows and doors in 657 Boulevard allow me to watch you, to track you as you move through the house. Who am I? I am the Watcher and have been in control of 657 Boulevard for the better part of two decades now. The Woods family turned it over to you. It was their time to move on, and kindly sold it when I asked them to. Have a happy moving in day. You know I'll be watching. The watcher continued to terrorize the owners of the house. He sent more letters that threatened men, women, and mostly the children. Chaos and dread plagued the neighborhood. Investigations, accusations, and even lawsuits flew around as the couple began to go crazy in a continuous effort to find the Watcher. They never found the Watcher. The couple never moved in, and they managed to sell the house in 2019. This next story is called The Man from Dorred. The story of the man from Dorred begins on a hot day in July 1954. On that particular day, a man arrived at Anita Airport, known also as Tokyo International Airport. This man has been described as Caucasian, 
Chinese immigration officer notices something strange. Whilst the passport looks real, the country where it was issued was called Torred, which was recognized as non-existent either by the officer or one of his colleagues. And the man was taken away for interrogation. The man tried to convince the immigration officers that Torred did indeed exist. According to the traveller, Torred was located between France and Spain and had by there been in existence for a thousand years. When shown a map, the man pointed to the area occupied by Andorra, but he was confused as to why his country was called Andorra on the map. Both sides refused to give in. The Japanese officers insisted that Torred did not exist, and the traveller argued otherwise. The man was held by the officers as they were suspicious that he might be some kind of criminal. They took him to a nearby hotel for the night while they conducted their investigation to ensure that the man did not escape during the night. Two guards were placed outside his room. The next morning, when the officers went to the man's room, the man from Torred had simply vanished with no signs of his escape. Additionally, all of his personal documents, which may have served as evidence for the story's validity, disappeared with him as well. And the man from Dorred was never heard from again. This final story is called The Isdal Woman. In 1970, the remains of a woman are discovered in Norway by a father and his two daughters who stumble across the freshly burnt remains of a woman while hiking in the woods on a chilly Sunday morning. The body was wedged between two rocks in an area known as Death Valley due to its popularity being a suicide spot in the Middle Ages. In the vicinity, police found a charred umbrella, two water bottles and a near empty bottle of locally produced liquor as well as a shawl, a pair of boots, and a woolen jumper. A post-mortem revealed this woman had died of an overdose, with 50 sleeping pills discovered inside her stomach, but evidence of smoke inhalation showed that she was still alive. When she was set on fire, it is thought carbon monoxide poisoning from the fire contributed to her death. Analysis of her teeth put her age at just 30 years old, and the police's first thought was that she had killed herself. But this is where the story begins to get creepy. While her clothes, which were not designed for the icy conditions, were largely destroyed. Investigators saw that any logos and labels had been cut out. Jewelry and a watch had also been removed and placed around her body, like some kind of ceremony. Despite her burns, police had been able to take victims.
prescription lotion, a diary, and a postcard. But anything that could have identified the woman had been deliberately cut out or scraped off. The postcard was traced back to an Italian photographer who, when interviewed, said he remembered giving it to a mystery woman at a dinner, but said that he didn't know anything about her. Police also found wigs, uh, non-prescription spectacles, and money in various currencies, giving rise to the theory she was a spy. The local police found that when they began investigating links to foreign intelligence, they were shut down by higher powers. After an appeal, witnesses also came forward to claim that they had seen her take notes during a military test of rockets in western Norway. Could she have been a foreign spy to monitor secret trials of the new Penguin missile? to be potentially used against the Soviet Union. This idea was given further weight by the discovery of a notepad with handwritten number sequences, which were eventually cracked to reveal an extensive travel itinerary beginning in March of 1970. Investigators found the woman a travel between Bergen, Trondheim, and Oslo in Norway. She had also visited Paris, Hamburg, and Basel. Whichever hotel she checked into, she used one of eight fake passports, all bearing different names. Investigators discovered the names that she used, among them Vera Schloschneck, Alexia Zara, Herschel, and Elizabeth Lienauer. People that simply don't exist. The source of the luggage was eventually located to a shop in Bergen. The owners described her as an elegant and well-dressed woman who spoke English well, but with an accent. A waitress at the Hotel Nepton in Bergen, where she stayed, described her as having dark, mid-length hair, a pretty lady, but very serious, somber, and mysterious. Staff said she was also fluent in French and German. Strangely, she also requested to swap hotel rooms multiple Information about her appearance was used to, to create forensic drawings of what she may have looked like, which were then distributed to the public. With no further leads, the woman's death was eventually ruled a suicide, and she was buried in 1971 in a Catholic funeral with police in attendance. Although the case is still open, more and more questions are being raised as time goes on. What happened to her? Was she murdered? Did she commit suicide? Who was she? Was she a spy?